Test is going to cover chapter 11. And we saw a few things get through it. Okay. Any questions about any of that? Changes to the schedule and stuff? You guys are really cool with that? Okay. Um, yesterday we finished this up here. I, I made the point, I'm pretty sure I made the point, I'm hoping past me made this point. We found that vertex there, actually we found it just because it was the turning point. You see how it's going 14, 7, 2, negative 1, negative, it's going down, and then right here it starts to go back up. It's negative 1 on both sides of this. So it starts to go back up, that must be the vertex. Well, where do you see 1 and negative 2 in the original equation? In the original function, I see a one right there. I see a negative two right there. Right? So I want to remind you guys of something. Um, this is a very nifty idea. You're going to use the hell out of this idea if you're taking pre-calc. We're just going to use it a little bit here. We're going to use the heck out of it, not the hell out of it. Going back in time a little bit. You guys remember what that looks like? What are you guys doing in the air? What does a square root look like? If you graph it, can you guys make it in the air? A few guys are playing with me. I like it. So it's like this, or from your perspective, this. All right? It keeps going up forever, but it goes up slower and slower and slower. Um, and it's got, so 0 is 0, 1 is 1, 4 goes to 2. So there it is, right? And why does it start at 0? Why does it start at 0? How do you figure out the domain? It's got to be true about the thing on the inside. It has to be greater than or equal to zero. So one of the things we did with square roots specifically, but that actually works the same way with any function really, is we looked to see what would happen to it if I put something inside, like a minus five. Now what's the domain going to be? The inside has to be greater than equal to zero. So x has to be greater than equal to five. Because what's the very first thing I do to any input I put in here is I take five away from it. So think about it like this. What kind of input do I have to put in to get the same output as the first guy, the one without a minus five messing it up? Whatever input I put in has to be five bigger than it used to be. Because what's the first thing I do to the poor thing Take five away from it. Does that make sense? One thing that really freaks people out about, about what's called translations, moving functions up and down, left and right, is when it's inside with the x, it does the opposite. You might, your brain might go, well, that should go back five, Jeff. It's a minus. 
But you've got to realize, you've got to overcome that minus 5. So all the x's have to go up by 5. So if I graph this, in fact, what's the domain? It's going to start at 5. So now it's going to be that same picture, but it's going to start at 5. 6 would be there. It just moves over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Bam. 7, 8, 9, 10, 10. Let's see, 9 would be there. Pop. So it just moved every point over 5. Now, let me apply that same logic to parabolas, to x squared. Where's this guy's vertex? Where's, how does this look? I know you guys can all graph it in the air. Everybody should be able to make a little U. I love it. But where's the bottom part of the U? It's going to be 0, 0. That's kind of like the standard place where it starts. Because if I square something, the smallest I can get for a real number squared is 0. And then when I square anything else, it's going to go up from there. So that's basically why it's got this shape. So what's going to happen then if I do this? Same idea as what happened here. The exact same idea. In fact, it doesn't matter what the function is. If I replace x with x minus 1, it will always pick the whole thing up and move it up 1. Try to do it from your perspective. It's going to move it up 1. Why? Because all of my x inputs have to be 1 bigger than they used to because it was the first thing that I, that I do to the poor thing. Take one away. So what did I have to use to put in to get zero? I put a zero in to get zero. What do I put in to get a zero now? One. Because one minus one is zero. So now this thing, it just moves this thing over one. Every point just gets moved over one, and now it looks like that. So the vertex here is 0, 0. What's the vertex here? Zero. One, zero. 1, 0. There's the 1. Now, one last thing I can do to this poor little dude. If I do this, if I do this now, it's going to take that, that graph. Where's that graph? Right there. Right, that's the graph of this, right? Yeah. It's going to take that graph and move it up to... All the outputs are now going to be two bigger than they used to be. So it's going to take this whole thing and just move it one, two up. So now it's going to look like this. It's going to go one, two up, one, two. So this is going to be here, this is going to be here, now it's going to be way up there. Where's the vertex now? One, two. One, two. One, two. So that's what we call standard form for a quadratic equation is the little p squared plus or minus something. Because why do we call it standard form? Because that's where I see the most important stuff. I see if it opens up or down, it's up because that's positive. And I see where the vertex is. That's the, the two most important things to know about it is it's open up or down. And where the hell's the vertex? So if I had a uh, if I had a function like this, can anybody tell me where the what the vertex is? First off, does it open up or down? Yeah, why down? This is negative. It's crazy. And where's the vertex? Seven. Yeah, seven. Positive for 7, 4. It would move it to the right 7, up 4. So that form seems to be kind of important. Right? In fact, on the back of that sheet we did yesterday, let's come back to that. Those are all working away. So that sheet we did yesterday, we finished that side out, look on the other side of it, square, 
for a quadratic equation in this form. This is standard form for a parabola. The sign on A determines if it opens up or down. It's related to slope. If A is positive, it opens up. If A is negative, it opens down. This piece, the H and the K, determines the vertex. So here the vertex would be at the point H, K, whatever that is. And again, why? Because it's going to move from 0, 0, it's going to move it over H, and then up or down K, depending on if K is negative or positive. So it's going to end up at H, K. That's Because that's what it does. It moves it over, up, down. There's the vertex is HK. Now, one weird little thing is, let me see if you guys can do this. Let's look at these two. This is pretty good. What can you, talk, what can you tell me about this one? What's, what's the vertex for this guy going to be? Four, three, four. Yeah, four, three. So let's plot that. Four, three. Which way is it open? Down, because it's negative out there. Uh, let's see what else is important here. No, that's busy. Uh, what about the y-intercept? I don't know why they didn't ask for a y-intercept. That's too bad. How do you get the y-intercept? Set x equal to zero. So if x is zero, this is negative 4 squared is 16, times negative 2 is negative 32, plus 3 is negative 29. That's off my graph. Oh, shit. But how can I get another point? Do you see that, that uh, the y-intercept is off my graph? How about x-intercepts? Can you guys find the x-intercepts? Y equals zero. So the y-intercept we figured out is uh, negative 29, 0. Because you get negative 32 plus 3, negative 29. It's way the hell down here. It makes sense because it's opening down. It's going to hit that way down there. Can you guys, if you try to find the x-intercepts, I'll tell you very quickly, they're going to be gross. If I set this thing equal to 0, I can subtract 3, divide by negative 2, take the square root. That's going to be pretty damn gross. Does somebody have another way I can get another point? Well, 4 goes to 3. Can I just plug a 3 in? When I plug a 3 in, I get 3 minus 4. It's negative 1 squared one. times negative 2 plus 3, one. 1. So at 3, it goes to 1. This is the vertex. This is my boom stick. This is the vertex. Is that a max or a min going to be? Max, because it's up there. It opens down, so it's going to be maximum. Can somebody tell me, without doing any computational work. Where is there another point? Yeah, what's right here? This is going to be where the mirror is, right? This is going to be the axis of symmetry. So if you know one point on one side, there's got to be a mirror image point on the other side because parabolas are always symmetric. So the axis of symmetry is right here. Yeah, there's, so there's got to be another. There's got to be a mirror image of this guy right there. And if I plug a five in, five minus four is one squared is one. So negative two is negative two plus three is still one. There's got to be that mirror image point. Now normally it's going to be the y-intercept in its mirror image, but the y-intercept was off my graph. Shit. So I had to plug something in to get another point. So now I can get my graph. Wee, wee. Oh shit. <laughs> Try to make it symmetric. So that 2 actually makes it get skinnier. I know it opens down, but it's easier to see if I do this. It makes it skinnier because it's doubling all the output. So it's going to, if it's going up, it's going to go up faster. If it's going up, it's going to go down faster. It makes it skinny. So what's a 1 half going to do to it? It's going to make it fatter, right? It's going to open slower up. 
or in this door, it might open slower down. It's going to make it fatter. So you guys try to do number two the same way we did number one. I'll help you out just a little bit. What's out here? Yeah. Store the vertex. Does that open up or down? If you can find the wider step nice, then you can use that. What's the, what's the vertex? Be careful. It's not two zero. Negative two. Look here. Wasn't this one four three? So it's the opposite of what that is. Why? Because x has to counteract that minus four. So x has to be four bigger. X has to counteract that adding two. So x has to be two smaller. Negative two. Yes. So uh, the quickest way to look at it is, I'll go back to this, what makes this zero? What x value makes this zero? Four. That's why it was four. What x value makes this zero? That tells you where the zero moves to on the x-axis, and then this one is not going to go up or down at all. It's plus zero, so it's going to stay there. So the, the vertex is negative two, zero. What else? What opens which way? Up. Up. What about uh, y intercept? Zero two. Yeah, if you plug a zero in for x, zero plus two is two, squared is four, times a half is two. Zero two. So let's plot what we know then. We know that the vertex is negative two, zero. We know that the winder set the 0, 2, so where is there got to be another point? Let's the mirror here. Yeah, it's got to be 1, 2, 1, 2 away. It's got to be negative 4, 2. How do you check that? You plug a negative 4 in and make sure a 2 comes out. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2 squared is 4. Cut in half is 2. Thank God. So that's all I need right there. What's this axis of symmetry? X equals negative 2. It's always x equals the x part of the vertex. Because that makes it go right through the vertex. That's where the mirror is. I like it. Yes, yes. So this is really interesting to me. Uh, students, forget this so quickly. To find the y-intercept, you make x. Zero. To find the x-intercept, you make y. Zero. So in my uh, last math class I ever took, there was an equation that I had with, uh, with like 18 letters in it, 18 variables. So if I wanted to find the w-intercept, what did I do? Made all the other letters zero. See, that idea carries from math 90 all the way up to math, what was it, 696? Yes. 
You know, the axis of symmetry, it's got to run through the vertex. So it's going to be the x part of the vertex. Now, to be completely honest, right now we're studying parabolas that open up and down. There are parabolas that open left and right. Their axis of symmetries would be y equals the y piece. But it's, right now, it's x equals the x piece of the vertex. That would make it go right through the vertex, which is where the mirror should go. I like that. Here, before we try these other ones, you guys try another one of these. To find the vertex, vertex, uh, y intercept, and then graph this. Make sure you guys are on the right track. What do you get for the vertex so far? I love it. Oh yeah, it, you know, you should tell this for yourself. It opens which way? Down. Okay. Now the nice thing is since I didn't give you the scale, for a graph for this one, you can give your graph your own scale. So you can capture the y-intercept no matter where the hell it is. Just make a scale, a good scale. What do you guys do for the y-intercept? Anything else? Zero. Yeah, if you make x zero, you get nine times negative two is negative eighteen plus one. Negative seven. So let's try to graph this thing. So my vertex is at negative three. One, but what kind of scale do I maybe want to use? I want to be able to get all the way down to negative 17. Five. Yeah. Oh, I got it. All right. Twos and fives. So it doesn't matter. Let's use threes. Negative three, negative six, negative nine, negative 12, negative 15, negative 18. So this is three, this is six. So my vertex is negative three, one, which is about right there. And my y-intercept is 0, negative 17, which is about right there. Oh, this could get interesting. So where is there another point? How far away is this this way from the axis of symmetry? How far away is that point? 1, 2, 3. So there's got to be another point at the same level. 1, 2, 3. Yeah, negative 6, negative 17. And how do you check to make sure that that point is actually on the graph? You just plug negative 6 in and make sure that negative 17 comes out. You can always check it. So I really want this to make sense. This is the mirror here. How far away is that point on this side? 1, 2, 3. So there's got to be another point, 1, 2, 3, at the same level. That's that mirror image point. I think the book calls it the point of symmetry, but it's a mirror image point. And that's all I need. I just really need three points, the vertex and then two other points to give me the shape of this thing. That's pretty good for me. So
So many things in life are governed by parabolic functions. There's so many things that do this type of thing. There are certain comets that have parabolic orbits. There's, there's, there's a, a power consumption is parabolic. It's high in the summer, high in the winter, and not very high in the nice months, right? So that's parabolic. There's so many things in life that are parabolic you don't even realize. Um, there's one other thing I want to say and I forgot. But oh. well, look at the x-intercepts. It would be remarkably gross. But how would you find them? In fact, find the x-intercepts. We haven't done that yet. Find the x-intercepts. And I don't mean like this. I mean find out what they are exactly. This is something you have to be able to do yourself. I'm going to be asking you this question on a quiz or a test. Math selfie. I like it. Math selfie. Try to warn you guys, these are not going to be pretty. But how do you do it? You take this and you set y equal to zero. You don't make x zero, so you're going to find that y intercept. So you make zero equal negative two times x plus three squared plus one. How do I solve that? Yeah, you don't do any foiling, do you? Subtract one. Then you divide by negative two. And then I square root. Turn this around. And then I just subtract three. What's special about negative three? What was our vertex? Why does it make sense? I'm going to try to lead you into something we're about to get into. Do you see how the quadratic formula, oh shit, um, do you see how the quadratic formula has that plus or minus in it? So let me write this a little bit differently. This is negative b over 2a, give or take all this mess. Stay with me, stay with me. What's quadratic formula do? What does it do? Find x. Find x when? Be more specific. Don't just say it finds x. It finds x for a specific situation. Yeah. When x squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And, and what normally is on that side? f of x, which is y. So when I make it 0, I am finding the x-intercept. So what does the quadratic formula do? Finds x intercepts. That's what it does. Finds the x intercepts. It finds the solution to ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. But what is that? 
That's me trying to find the x-intercepts. That's me making y zero. Do you guys understand? Those are the x-intercepts of anything. Any parabola, that's, that's what they look like. So, so do, you, do you guys see how negative b over 2a is in the middle, and then I add this stuff to it, and I subtract this stuff from it, and that's the two x-intercepts. I really want you guys to see that. Negative b over 2a plus this minus this. That's the two x-intercepts. So what's always in the middle of the two x-intercepts? Freaking negative b over 2a is. If I said 7 plus 5 and 7 minus 5, what's in the middle of those? You're like, 7, dumbass, because that's what you added 5 and took 5 away from, right? It's not even a question, Jeff. 7 plus 5 and 7 minus 5, what's in the middle? 7 is. Of course it is. It's 5 away from both sides. So what's right in the middle of that? Negative b over 2a. Because I'm adding and subtracting the same shit from it. The vertex will always be right in the middle of the intercepts. So watch this. We're getting a little out of order, I don't care. Which ones have we done today? Let's see, blah, blah, blah. Oh. Let me see. This guy here. All right, this guy here. The vertex was four, three. That's the first one we did. Now, let me see how I can get you guys to bear with me. If I kind of multiply this stuff out, it would be minus 32 plus 3 minus 29. So what I just said was, x equals negative b over 2a is the x piece of the vertex. It's going to be right in the middle of the two x-intercepts. What's b? 16. So negative 16, and what's a? Negative 2. Negative 16 over negative 4 is? 4. Now, some of you guys are like, we had to do a lot of shit to get there just to do that, but I, I, look, you got to look at it a different way. Let, let's do this kind of problem. Do you see how this was given to me like this? Do you guys think it's easy to go from this to there? It was easy to go from this to there, wasn't it? I just had to foil shit out, put stuff together. But how do you go from this to that? Oh, let's do that. Why, Jeff? Because. I don't care about that other stuff over there, to be honest. Let me give you the next handout. Yeah. Yes. Are we getting our practice test? No. When's the test? Next Tuesday. Are you aware of that? Okay. So I'm going to give it out Thursday. The answer key will be with, with, for you Monday. And the test is next. Yeah, that's on Tuesday.
So I did just get a little ahead of myself, but I was too excited to stop. Actually, when you learn that negative B over 2 way thing, you don't even realize it's kind of a big step. Yeah. Let's take a step back. These, we're going to put these into this form. And it's sort of like solving for y with a line. Why do you solve for y with a line? Because it's, then it's in mx plus b form. And why is that so amazing? Because m is a slope and b is a y-intercept, and those are the two most important things to know about a line. What's the two most important things to know about a parabola is, does it open up or down, and what the hell is the vertex? So it makes sense that its standard form tells you those things. The problem is, let's see if you guys get this. I don't really have two sides to work with. How do I make this happen? I actually have to complete the square. But I don't have two sides to work with. So it's a little bit like uh, this reference is less and less understood. I know this movie came out in the early 80s, but Indiana Jones, you know, ah, yes. Yes, yes. Yes. the whole scene where he doesn't balance his equation correctly because he takes that little gold statue off and puts the sand on, and he doesn't quite get the sand right because the boulder comes down. And, ah, people can't throw it sheer straight and all that kind of um, It's like the stormtrooper paradigm. Can't hit the good guys. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is whatever I have to add for the completing the square step, at the same time I better subtract it because I'm going to do it all on the same side. I've only got one side of stuff to work with. So if I add something to a side and not the other side, that's not legal. But if I add something and subtract it at the same time, put the sand and take the statue away, then it's balanced. Everything's fine. Nothing's different. Right? You just didn't have enough sand or too much sand or something. All right. So I'm going to go through this first one. Say again? Too much sand, because that makes sense why it went down. But then you've got to think about it. You just take the damn statue off then. So it must have been a different kind of sensor. Anyway, obviously I've analyzed that a little too much. So let's do this one. Let's see. I'm going to have to do both of these with you because they're kind of freaky. So I'm going to make room, but I'm going to make room like this. How do I complete the square for this? What are the two steps? Uh, yeah, negative 6 divided by 2 is? Negative 3. Negative 3 squared is? 9. Nine. So that's what I must add here, right? I'm going to put plus 9. I just put the sand down. At the same time, I better freaking take the statue away. Now, if you've never seen that movie, you don't have to see it just so you understand. I mean, you got to see it because you should freaking see the shit, man. What's wrong with you? That's before all computer graphics made everything really suck. So when Yoda was like a real thing you could touch, not this little thing. <laughs> well, we're not going to get into the whole prequel shit. But I'm not going to start that discussion. So if I add nine. I've changed that side, so I better do one at the same time. Subtract them. If I add 9 and subtract 9, did I just change that side at all? No. If you give me $10 and I give you two fives, are either of us richer or poorer? No. You gave me 10, I gave you 10. We're both the same. So if I add 9, I better subtract 9 at the same time. So on one level, it's like, ooh, good job. But what did I just do? How does this factor? And what's 10 minus 9? Uh, negative 1. 1. Can you see the vertex now? What's the vertex? 3, 1. Does it open up or down? It's just positive, so it opens up. And what's the axis of symmetry going to be? Three. I like that. It's always, for ones that open up or down, it's always got to be x equals the x piece, so it goes right through the vertex. I'm talking about Indiana Jones. He's a really sarcastic teacher. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you've seen his teaching scenes... 
I love that stuff. Yes. So do you see how I can't really add something to this? But if I did put a plus 9 there, how would I make it go away? I would subtract 9 from both sides. So what I'm doing is if I put a plus 9 there, I should put a plus 9 on the other side, but I can't really mess with that. So I just put a minus 9 on this side. So what does this work out to be? If you, if you put 9 minus 9, is it anything different from what it was? No. no. That's the same as this, isn't it? So on one level, it's, it's kind of dumb. You're like, what'd you just do? Nothing. Good job, you. <laughs> right? But on the other side, I've made the first three terms factors, and the last two terms are like terms. And then I got it in a form where I can see the vertex. So it's not as easy as solving for y in a line, but it accomplishes very much the same idea. If I put it in the right form, I can see the most important parts of the graph. This is the connection between algebraic equations and their graphs. There's an intimate connection between the two. There should be, because they both represent the same thing. Now, now, this one sucks. This one's really going to suck. Cause this one was, uh, so before I do this one, let me let you guys try one of these. Let me make one up. That just jumps the shark bill quickly. Gets right to the ugly stuff. Got any paper like this. So here, you guys put this into standard form. Uh, let's see. that in the standard form. So your goal is to make it look like this. So you want us to put it in vertex form? Yeah, you can call it that. I'm cool with that. It's standard form. But yeah, put it in the... This is standard form. I thought that was standard form. That's it. Oh. That says standard form. I don't like that. Do <laughs> that. Yeah, so put it into this form. Different textbooks call different things. So if I said standard form of a line, I would immediately think y equals mx plus b, right? Yeah. Some books call standard form ax plus by equals c. I always hated that shit. The standard form should be this. So if you say standard form, we're talking about this. Yeah, so I'll be more specific. I'll say put it into this form. I'll put this down there, okay? On the test. Then there won't be any question. What the hell Jeff's talking about? We should be different. So what are the two steps here? First step is? A divided by two. Yeah, A divided by two. And then you take that in. Square it. So I'm going to add 16. That tells you how this piece is going to factor. And now here I get. Minus four. They're both negative, so they get lower. So where's the vertex? Negative four. I like. What's the 
y intercept? Don't look at this shit. Look at that shit. If we make x zero, what's the only thing left? Yeah. When it's in this form, whatever you want to call it, putting, finding the line intercept is easy. It's this guy. Because yeah. everything else has an x in it, they're going to disappear when it makes x zero, so the y intercept will be zero, negative eight. Mm -hmm. Does it up and up or down? Up, oh, because it's positive. I like it. So here's the last one we'll do today. Oh, maybe not even. Real quick, this guy. Here's the first step in it. Why well, did I have to do this? Because completing the square requires there to be a one here. Right? All right. So we'll finish that up next time. Don't forget. Oh, tomorrow's quiz. And the next day, it's going to be 11 1, 11 2, 11 3. Don't forget. Give me a kiss if it's possible. Oh, yeah.